Hello, yes, uh, John Rob here, interviewing Keely Forsyth about um, intriguing uh, music. So, I mean, what, what, I, what I first want to get to is, is your route to what you're doing now is quite interesting because you, you come through acting to get to music. In, in many ways, you, you're a late starter, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, that's That probably makes a lot of sense because I like, I think the music is very much, um, I had to unearth it. You know, it was very deeply rooted. So it kind of made sense that it, it's taken this path and it's kind of taken so long because, yeah, a lot of the work and foundations are unseen. You know, it's kind of underground stuff. Um, yeah, so I was I spent 20 years as an actor. Um, and but as time went on, I kind of felt that it wasn't the right medium for me to be in. Um, there was still, yeah, it was still around the theater, but I was kind of yeah, very a, a little bit lost as as we can all get. Um, so before this, bef before I released the music, there was a a period of like stillness where you just have to stop and almost become immobile and disabled, you know, to be able to do anything. And then what comes through that is the clarity of where you need to be. Um, but yeah, but I started as a singer and I trained as a dancer, you know, obviously many, many years ago. Um, and tried to make it into musical theatre, but I, yeah, I, I would have, I would want to do my my own way of approaching things, and and at the time it didn't seem like that was a kind of positive, unique thing when you're desperate to work and be accepted in an industry, an industry that you love. You know, I loved the voice and I love theatre, and to you know to be kind of always told that you need to. Um, yeah, you need to just kind of um, be of a certain, like, oh, even open your eyes when you sing. When I'm singing, I just can't help but it be quite internalised. And I hated myself for not being able to give what people needed. And I, <clears throat> and, it, and it was, it's only kind of in later life I realised that those things are actually what makes me able to do what I do. But at the time, you know, yeah, it's any excuse to feel less than and feel like you can't that, that you're a failure but I mean, how different are the mediums for expression you know from acting dancing or music i mean they, i mean ostensibly they seem very very different but do, do they cross over or yeah now they feel that now it seems like they are of the same entity for me because i started to um just feel things from a from a broader sense so tone movement drama comes out of the same kind of visceral um communication really for me now but when i trained yeah they, they were they were they were they did feel completely different years and years ago and i think that's when i kept going down a certain path and always being led to a bit of a dead end um now i mean i do a little bit of teaching and what i always try and teach is that um, yeah, there are no, there's, you, you know, we think, even with music, we think that we hear it through our ears, but there's the vibration that happens kind of from your feet, from, you know, there's all these things. And if you allow yourself to open up as, as a person, you become, <clears throat> you can maybe become an artist then and not just a singer or a musician or an actor or a dancer. Um, you can access all those things. So they are the same thing. And I, when I am performing, I do, yeah, I try and use everything. Yeah, so they're, they're all kind of being a communicator. Yeah, yeah. But um, but we, because uh, you, yeah, you, you, but you understand that in that same way, don't you? You know, when we were kind of like talking about feeling more of a um, recipient of, you know, a kind of vibration than, hmm. yeah, there's much more interest in that. I mean, I mean, I know it sounds quite a lazy thing, but with, with acting, would it be a case of immersing yourself in somebody else or music, you're immersing yourself in yourself, or is it a bit more blurred than that? Yeah, no, <clears throat> I think if I was a better actor, I might 
been able to see the artistry in it a bit more, but it always felt like, yeah, I was just trying to, um, yeah, just trying to facilitate someone else's vision, which is a great way to learn. You, you know, I learned a lot of how to work in a team and how to collaborate, but you are just trying to facilitate someone else's. And actually I, I stepped away from it a bit because I felt that I was, I was, um, I was starting to learn quite negative um, patterns of <clears throat> always asking whether it was okay, asking someone else, is that okay? What do you want me to do? Do you want me to do it like this or like this? And that came from years of being an actor because that's your job to make someone else's um, vision come alive. Um, yeah, and then I, it, yeah, it can, I was, so I kind of tried to stop that and, and try to empower myself in, not asking for permission, whether I feel I'm doing something right or, or not. And that's the wonderful thing about doing my stuff because yeah, I can go on stage and I don't have to come off and go, was that okay? You know, yeah. so, so that's good. <laughs> so with the music you're making, I mean, it's obviously very idiosyncratic, very original. Was that the original music that you heard in your head or was that just because the only way you can make music or express yourself is what you had to hand? Yeah, I mean, it It was really, what well, the only thing that I had to hand was a harmonium um, and that was perfect for my sound really, but I was just needing something to, um, yeah, to kind of place myself in and that harmonium gives, yeah, it just kind of gives, um, it's like the lungs, it just kind of really gives this placement and you can, but I was, I, I grew up listening to, I mean, although, um, you know, kind of Northern, very working class, but my gran used to always get singers and opera singers on tapes. So I was, I grew up the, you know, just kind of conversing through songs. So it was never, you know, I don't write songs that have, I don't even know anything about verses and choruses, but it's just, you start to sing your thoughts and they become, um, so yeah. So the harmonium kind of worked well in that way because it is just a drone and, so it doesn't, it's not, it's not kind of pushing you into any melody or any place. Um, but the guy who then kind of made everything sound as it does on the record. Um, yeah, he was able to just bring that same thing to life. Um, yeah, with his skill set of musician. Yeah, you, you sent him a track, didn't you? Um, yeah, you so I sent on, on The Late Show, which is a wonderful radio show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, um, Max Reinhardt has been... A real supporter, like right from the beginning, I used to send him stuff years ago, you know, just kind of sending it to the BBC email thing. And I made a track that um, I made from the noises of a coffee machine and he played it again kind of recently, like a few months ago. You know, he remembers mm. stuff and um, yeah, he's always been really supportive. Um, but I heard, yeah, the, the guy who I now collaborate with, the musician, I heard him on Max's um radio show and the world just it was like something that I'd not heard before and the world that he was manifesting through sound kind of was really yeah resonated with me so I got in touch not thinking at all you know a kind of random person who doesn't have any kind of ex experience in the music industry and I asked whether I could just send him some tracks and I pressed record and it lasted for about I sent him like 40 minutes worth of just songs going from one to the other with my harmonium. Mm -hmm. And he was, yeah, amazing. And that's kind of how it started, but yeah, just waiting, not, yeah, it's always, you always feel, especially as a, um, you know, as a, um, uh, uh, yeah, as a kind of freelance creative, you always kind of feel that you must be doing things all the time, but it's weird with the music. I just, I thought I, yeah, I didn't, I just kind of, I thought, I know when something comes along that feels right, I will move kind of when inspired, even though I was desperate to be doing something. But I did just wait for that moment where I could go, this is it. How did, how did you know? I mean, do you mean the moments when you knew the music was there to splurge you out? Yeah, and, and the moment that I knew, I remember listening to Matt Bourne on the radio and I got... I just knew, I felt it in my gut that this was the right person. And this was, it sounds like the moment I've been waiting for. Not that it's a big, you know, it's only kind of very humble and small in my 
nonsense world but it was like yeah and so to 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 work and to go to move with those impulses almost means 10 times more than me kind of going out trying to get a band together trying to you know yeah it just felt like that was absolutely downstream and from that moment on then things happened things did happen quite quickly and easily because unbeknown to me Matt Bourne was with Leaf label who were based in Leeds so within a few months they'd heard and then it was kind of you know out which was mm. yeah exciting yeah I mean when, when you're writing your songs and creating your songs when you had that moment you know the uh, the sign from the heavens or whatever you know was it I mean you're not right as you say you don't write versus choruses but were you trying to create atmospheres with a piece of music you know create moods textures yeah atmospheres yeah, it's yeah, it's always about that. I don't, yeah, I don't consider myself <clears throat> a musician in that way at all. I kind of go really, I, I go, I try to cut everything off, and and sometimes there'll just be a texture of I feel that I'm in the soil, but I will, yeah, I'll. It's I always kind of feel that that I have to become, I have to get rid of everything that I know about myself, and I'll start to. Um, see where I'm at and then sing from sing from that place um, wherever my the weight is placed I'll feel like like this next record that I'm writing I felt like debris was almost it was like a lump um, she was singing but it was quite kind of closed in and quite muffled where this time it felt it feels that this thing has grown limbs so there's more of a yeah the, the sounds um a more inclusive there's more of a kind of larger um torso that it's kind of come out of but but yeah but maybe i think that's just my from from acting because when you give when you get any character you have to understand where they've come from it's you can't just pick up a script and and say the word you have to really un, like write to the from the beginning how different their pulses and Everything, you know, the clothes they're wearing, who they are, where they come from, and speak that's, from that yeah. point. That's interesting. So you're you're applying that to yourself. Yeah. As, as a yeah. character. So you're you're kind of acting out yourself, as it would without the fair to say. Yeah, I'm a, it's a it's it's a part of myself, but it's something that I don't I've I've always yeah, it doesn't feel right to even say that it I talk about her, I talk about the singer. Um, because it, yeah, that just feels. It is something that I'm. Yeah, it is something that I'm making, and even though the performances that I do on stage can be seen as being quite dark and intense, the moment I step off, then it's gone, mm -hmm. and that's the healthy way of working. Yeah, I think I think all performers are like that, aren't they? I mean, yeah, true performance yeah. is a madness, but it could be switched on and switched off. Yeah. Can't it? Yeah, because then you get to enjoy it, you know. I, although I always sing, and there is a part of me that that understands, you know, the kind of <clears throat> yeah, the darkness of things. But I, but I also, yeah, I also believe that the, that it's I, I don't kind of take that seriously. I don't take myself so so seriously. Um, is that, is that because of the older, um, you can't suck in the shoulder? <laughs> yeah, like, because I get bloody berated. What, about? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I still have to go home and, you know, <laughs> yeah, brush it off and pretend it's nothing. Um, it's interesting. So I like the idea, I'm interested in the idea that you think of yourself as a performer in the third person. That's, I mean, is that, is that a protective thing or is that just, just how you see it? You know, that's just... Yeah, I think it's just, it was never, it's, I just always used to say that, and I don't know whether that comes from, although there are some actors that when you are working with them, they want you to call them by their, you know, they want to be their character. But, um, but yeah, I've got, um, I, I, maybe it is a, a protective thing, but it's, yeah, I always, um sing and perform through it's not even a character but it's through something yeah it's through it's through something else and I'm happier to say that it is 
yeah, the voice or it's her. I don't know. There's no story to this character. It's not like a person. Um, but yeah, but it's course, just weird yeah. to do the other way. You can flip it round actually, and is maybe that's the reality in off stage. Yeah, there. probably. <laughs> it does feel because we, I think we, yeah, we was talking about how, yeah, being on stage is actually the moment when everything is just when it does feel, and yeah, it feels familiar. You feel pretty, you feel quite safe. It feels quite, it feels like it's home. And I'm not, you know, I am a shy person. I don't like being, being looked at. Uh, it's not that, you know, I don't kind of, it's not like, because I like knowing that people are looking at me, but it's, there's a silence that can be had there on stage that you just have a certain control over that perimeter that you don't really have in, in life. And it's a really wonderful, yeah, it's a really wonderful um, exploration to, to experience. That's why I like to keep things always quite um, improvisational. So I allow myself the time to understand where, I, where what is going on in that present moment that hasn't been rehearsed, that there's room to listen, there's room to just be. So it is it is trying to get to the core of everything but in a musical kind of way, isn't it? So it's in that moment, it's got to be in that zone, in that moment. And it's whatever piece of music reacts to that moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, like when you um when you perform, do you kind of feel do you really engage the audience? You know, because some some performers say that actually they, the audience that are, an, are another part of that performance and it can really differ, but I don't know how I kind of feel about that. Obviously the, the, the audience's presence does contribute and shift things, but, but yeah, there are some performers who really use that as another communicator within that. Yeah, I don't know. Do you, yeah. do you feel like that when you're performing? Do you kind of... Yeah, do you, you just, see the would, see the audience as like another band member or, or another element of the music? Yeah, I think you kind of the way that in our world you perform, yeah. you would you would kind of the energy of the audience feeds in, and it's almost like everybody is in the band, in yeah, a sense, yeah. and the music and the energies go backwards and forwards, which in a way is probably even though yours is much more of an insular performance, it's probably what you're doing as well, but not conscious of it in a sense, you know those those energies will be transferring. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And because I, you know, I, I keep my head down a lot. Um, and, and I was wondering why I was doing that. And I hope it wasn't just because, you know, I'm in my 40s and I'm a little bit wrinklier than I used to be. You know, I kind of <laughs> hate that thing of having to sudden... <laughs> but I think it's... Stage it's... lights, they come in. <laughs> <laughs> you know... Um, but I do, but I might be wrong, but but I kind of, you know, I'm hoping it's not an egotistical thing that I'm kind of keeping my head covered. But I think it's, yeah, in there's something very dom domesticated about, you know, the, a face that we see all the time. And when you take when you take that away, then it allows you much more freedom. I feel much freer and um, concealed. Um, yeah, then I do. There's something about, you know, kind of just showing your face to people is, it's something that we, yeah, yeah that we assume that we recognise, so we make lots of assumptions and you start to kind of look at people's face. And so I tried to kind of get that out of the equation. And it does feel a lot freer for me as a performance, as a performer, because then I like to make, to do like, you know, to make grotesque faces. And I don't, and I'm not quite, um, yeah, I don't want to feel kind of self-conscious about any, yeah, yeah. So it's easier to be somebody else and a thing rather than me and my body on stage. But That's interesting. So what, why, why would that, why is that? Is that? Would that be an extension of the internal? You know, it's, so it's not, um, you know, everyone presents a face to the world, which they probably most people think is, is a, as pleasant as they can make it. But um, to make it grotesque is actually quite interesting. Is that more of a moulding what you feel like inside in a way? Yeah, I just think, um, I mean, I, I love the kind of 
theater of cruelty, the absurdity in things, you know, I really am more, in, yeah, interested in that, in, yeah, there, in, in just, um, Yeah, because the, it's not kind of. Yeah, I just want to. I did. It, it does. It does make more sense for me to kind. Of, yeah, to be, to make something that's quite hideous. Um, not, not. I mean, even just to use that as a way of trying to get to some truth. You know, you try and rip off all these things, even you know when we walk down the street, you know, we're not supposed to kind of do stuff like this, you know, we're supposed to, and even if you forced yourself to do something through that, you might, on the other side, there might be a little bit more truth that comes out. So I always just kind of try and push myself in, like when I am on stage, I'll find myself doing things that are really embarrassing that, um, but I understand I'm doing it because I want, yeah, I just want to get rid of any preconceived ideas we have of who we think we are mm. and and then carry on with stuff. Is, is music the best format, though, because it's so primal? And, yeah, and, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the stuff I'm making recently where I'm, where I'm, yeah, I'm trying to kind of, I don't know whether it's before or, or after, but trying to, but doing more, um, vocalization sound so I'm, I'm taking the words out of it I mean something which I've the first record was very kind of um written you know the words were really important so I've tried to just take them out and try to discover what different sounds kind of you know in the throat or if you're hanging upside down you know so just try to kind of do just do a bit more stuff like that and there is a real freedom in um, yeah, in that in that medium, so yeah, music making a sound. Um, it takes me back to you know the kind of very primal, primitive nature of us. Mm -hmm. So it's almost it's like beyond language, beyond words, which all great music is in a way. It's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So would you be using words in the new material, or just basically just sounds? Well, the new record. Yeah, it, we, we kind of experimented more with, there's more um, electronics in this, so it was more experimenting with the sounds, but then, um, so af so I'm already working on new stuff kind of after this second record. Um, yeah, so I'm doing a whole thing which is just sounds and no words. Um, and just trying to manipulate that and, you know, putting that into the, um, what is it, the Ableton and using that as the form of the music as well as the vocal. So did, are the songs suggested by the vocals or does the, um, the harmonium or the electronics suggest, you know, suggest the vocals the other way around? Which way around is it or is it both? Um, I've been, I think because of the um, being, what is it, isolated, um, you know, kind of throughout the, recent recent time I have been doing more of a call and response but working in a way where people will send me sounds and I'll work over it and something always comes so I've been doing that more and yeah I do need something I can't just kind of come up with yeah I don't have songs that are going around in my head it has to be it has to it has to be charged with even just a tone but it feels like yeah, and it has to be charged, and then I can go. Do you find it easy working from drones, or what, what about rhythmic parts? You know, just somebody playing, not just drums, but you know, like just anything in the rhythmic part, like whether it's electronic rhythms or tribal rhythms, whatever. Yeah, I do. I would. Um, I got. I got in touch, and we've been having emails back and forth with Colin Stetson, who's a. Mm. Um, saxophone um yeah the saxophonist and and i really like so he he so his stuff is kind of like droney but also it's got the the beat that he somehow manages to kind of put a kind of beat behind it and that's yeah i, I like reducing things so just working with one 
that's what I'd like to do next because this record is very big. It's a lot bigger than Debris, but I, I, I'm, I am always happier walking alongside something that's very reduced and simple, but you know, just like one instrument, but someone being able to do. It's interesting you mentioned Colin Stetson because it's very, I see there's a lot of similarities. It doesn't sound, I mean, it sounds completely different, but the approach is similar. You know, it's, he's all, he's all about physicality of playing yeah. the sax and he plays the rhythm parts with his breath and he plays everything. It's like an orchestra, but it's just him and he's hitting the sides um, of the sax. And it's just the way you, I find that in your voice and, the, and your performance is it's using a similar idea, but with completely different ends. Yeah, it's true. We had a really lovely conversation and I, although I didn't know his approach to stuff, I just heard his music and I felt that it, there was a similarity. So I got in touch with him about doing something together. But then when we were just talking kind of leisurely about our approach, yeah, it was like, gosh, it's really, yeah, it's, it was similar. Um, so it's nice to be building just a small community of people that that you have a shorthand with. So you're able to just work together without trying to work each other out. Um, how much, yeah, yeah. So how much do you bring from your dance background, your initial background, into this? Well, the thing that I'm really interested in more so is uh, is the performance side of it. So I'm just getting funding at the moment, and the funding is really to get a choreographer on board. So yeah, to bring out because I haven't danced for a long time, but that's yeah to bring out those elements in me again. So I would. Yeah, that's what I would really, I would really love the performance to be a, a, a whole movement. So it's massive. Yeah, it's funny how things, because I haven't danced for, well, since me leaving college, but, and you think that, you know, gosh, I wasted all that time. But then as you get older, you then, things creep back in and you can use them. So I'm definitely, I don't have many things to draw upon. So I'm just drawing upon all the things I have, yeah. I put them to some use before it's too late. If it's choreographer though, would you find that a, a framework that you're trapped inside or is it like a harmonium that gives you a base to express but you still need something to be rooted into? Yeah, well, the woman who I work with, she she is a choreographer, but she works really with actors. Um, so she helps actors to release that you know the way some the way a different a character moves so she kind of helps them to access this other world so she's not yeah she doesn't kind of work so on steps which makes sense to me and I don't think I could probably do that to be honest I want to be able to be free enough in my body but I would like to work with other dancers that have the skill set to to perform that but um, yeah, the choreographer I work with is, yeah, she's she's more about just allowing you to kind of fulfil the potential that you're doing already. So it's like an extension of the physicality of the music. Yeah. Yeah, so there's no, um, I'm not going to be doing any um, shuffle, tap, steps, whatever. And... <laughs> no, 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 it's just... I'm I guess it has a magic light in terms of dance. It'd be, it'd be <laughs> body, body into shapes that sort of reflected the emotions that are in the songs. That's what yeah. I guess. Yeah. 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 But we'll see. Um, you know, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's always interesting what comes out of the sessions that you, that you have together. I think that's it. Um, I'm just assuming that, you know, I just won't be able to do that stuff anymore, but I'll definitely push myself towards it. Yeah. And see, because it's, there's there's a song that I um, in just the last performances that I did that was I couldn't quite find how to deliver it and then I kind of noticed that if that so you can still use the physicality like I I stood on stood on one leg and tried to keep that with keep that thing and kind of going quite down to the floor which is really difficult to do but then or it is for me but then the song made sense. The song then, the delivery of the song made sense because it was wobbly. It was, uh, you know, there was some tension when I was trying to deliver these things. I was trying to concentrate on something else, not falling over. And it was like, ah, you know, I'd been trying to work out what that missing piece was. And it, and it came from me trying to ex exert myself physically. So it's in a way, it's, the music's kind of three dimensional. It's, yeah. Yeah, how, how, it is how it feels, hopefully, but 
Yeah. I mean, what, what's your personal musical journey? You know, you, you're growing up in old and to, to get from there to, to here is quite an interesting quite a journey, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I was right from the beginning. I was massively into singers, which led me to the theatre, which led me to all kinds of, you know, Judy Garland, Edith Piaf, all, you know, all. I was really um, fascinated by not just the, but the singers that that were able to pour something of themselves into it. You know, there was a real kind of drama in there, um, and. Yeah, and then I would play them and almost try and mimic them. Um, and then as I got older, I kind of realised that my voice was kind of a bit similar, that it was maybe something I loved. Not only I loved doing it all the time, but, you know, I was kind of okay at it. So I then had lessons and I tried to get better. I tried to understand my voice. I did dance classes. I was brought up by my grand. So she was at a point in her life where she could give me the time and... She was a nurse at the Oldham hospitals, you know, so not a lot of money, but but she was able to give me time and, and to be consistent with paying for dance classes, you know, all that kind of stuff, going to workshops. Um, and, but then I just started life as an actor and I carried that on. And so I'm kind of picking up from many years ago with the stuff I'm doing now. Um, but yeah, it's still kind of the same. I still love those same singers. So, yeah, it seems like a very kind of natural path. But, yeah, my gran, you know, my, yeah, my gran always says that I was, um, yeah, just, I always, I, you know, I've all, I, even though I'm wearing this, I've, I've always worn black, been quite depressing and, you know, always kind of interested in different kind of stuff um, or to what my gran was probably used to with other kids. So, yeah, the path seems quite similar, but, um, yeah, they, my gran can't listen to any of the music that I make because she thinks it's <laughs> horrendous. <laughs> it's, it's dark, I mean, it's fantastically dark, intriguingly dark, melancholic. Were you quite surprised by how dark it was? Yeah, I was really, because... You know, again, there's parts of me that I also, uh, from a training point of view, I'm a, I'm a mezzo-soprano, so I do kind of sing in a higher... But again, it was this, the world that came to me first was a world that was very much about... Yeah, it was it, it was quite underground. It was muffled. It was dark. It, I, you know, it was soil. It was... That's what it was. So that's the, that's the sound that came out. And... Mm. And it, and it seems to be the thing that I've stuck with. I'm trying to for it not to be, you know, because easily you can that can become quite a safe place. So I'm trying to keep changing things. Mm. Like to keep the challenge, keep the edge. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the, I like the way you mentioned soil twice. That's quite interesting. I mean, um, I interviewed Shirley Collins, who's the folk singer. She's amazing, you know, and she talked about how. And she actually did a little track for my album, talk about um, all the music comes from the soil that you walk on. You know, the music, the folk music of England comes out the soil of the fields. And I love that idea. So in a sense, would your music come out the soil of Oldham? You know, the you can you can never escape your roots. They're always there, roots, soil. <laughs> yeah. Going with this. yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. I, you know, I wanted to get away from my roots as very early on. And, you know, and I'm kind of sad to say that that I'm not one of those people who absolutely love the North and feel connected to it. I've always felt that, um, which is, which is maybe what the best kind of place does for you, you, that it doesn't, it doesn't hold you in and it has never held me, but there are, you know, I, yeah, I, you go to the moors and there is definitely a landscape of Lancashire that, that I've not been able to find anywhere else. Um, but yeah, it's 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 an it's an odd place that I'm very proud to to come from. Um, but yeah, maybe as we do take that for granted, we don't kind of know that it's there. You know, like it's that kind of rootedness of um, yeah, that that because what is it? The Oldham Tinkers. We used to go and see them a lot. 
you I know, they're, 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 yeah. so yeah, it has kind of always probably been there. And the, and there's a, and the brass bands we used to always go and see with my gran, and there's, and in the second album, there's a lot of there's more brass tones, so you can't get away yeah. from it. Even that's really interesting. How, how do you try? I, mean, I guess I guess the brass you didn't bring in. I mean, would it be to replicate those brass bands? Because I used to hate them when I was a kid. But I, listened I know, to them me now. too. And they sound so melancholic and sad and, and rainy day that I actually quite like the atmosphere they create. Accidentally, maybe maybe it's the, the soil, their soil, isn't it? Is yeah, yeah, the brass, yeah. So. Yeah, and it's so quintessentially northern. I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's also because the drones on, on them as well, you know, the you're working harmoniums, it's it's not you know, it's not a big step sideways to go to brass, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's true. And I, I and I do like those it, yeah, those it's any tone that can just um sustain. Um yeah. Just maybe selfishly, because it just gives me more room as a vocalist to weave in and out mm. of, I think. Oh, no, that's fair enough. It's, it's yeah. hard it's hard work when everybody's playing all at once and you've got to put a vocal in. It's nice. Yeah. Just playing <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want any kind of distraction because I'm, yeah, I lose I've, my I've, concentration. So how come you play harmonium? Is that, is, that the, is that because of Nico or is that because you just like the sound of them or you just walk yeah, well, around? <laughs> It was just there was um, when I lived in London there was a, there was one that was going for sale in the charity shop so I liked the look of it and then yeah the, you don't have to do very much uh, yeah I felt I don't I don't play it as in I don't kind of read the music to play it um, I just you know I can play it enough for me to write a song um, and I always go back to that. So yeah, even now doing more electronic stuff, I still will go, I'll still start a song there. Um, but yes, it wasn't, it wasn't really, although I absolutely love Nico's music, you know, the Marble Index stuff is just wonderful. But, um, but yeah, it wasn't, it was more of a, just using what was there. I think it was a tenor from the charity shop. That was it. Yeah, I mean, they are amazing sounding, aren't they? And I love them in, a, in the Indian devotional music as well. It's yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> they just kind of they really pull you in, don't they? And, yeah. Yeah, and the one we used to perform, Matthew um, Bourne's got, um, I don't even know the proper name of it, but he pedals it. So you're always hearing, uh, uh, yeah, again, it's I like, I like to see the whole workings of something, even from, you know, human physical to instrument, you're seeing him pedal and you're hearing the knock at the, mm. um, at the floor as well. And it's, you know, and he gets out of breath trying to just kind of keep up with this thing. Um, yeah. It's really physical, isn't it? Yeah. Again, going back to Colin Stetson, isn't it? In that, yeah. Yeah. And that same. You can just hit, hear his hand hitting the side of the sax or his foot. Yeah. On the floor, and the other thing interesting is, is it, you can hear breathing and wheezy is done at harmonium, like it's a real organic being, isn't it? Yeah, well, there was what there's, yeah, it is, it, it's, yeah, it is, it's really true, it, it's true. And I think that I, I, st when I was spending time with it, I would, I would start to feel like it was actually, you, you can easily, it can easily feel like it is a part of you. So, like you know, the the dividing between you and instrument becomes less and less. And then, yeah, I've had some really nice times. You know, when nothing—it's not about recording or making anything. It's just about sharing something and 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 yeah, of having an interaction with something that you feel understands you. That there's something you know that's coming back. I love this idea. I love the idea that you inhabit the harmonium, but the harmonium is inhabiting you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just true. becoming. It's just all blurring yeah. into one. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's really nice. The minimalism of that is really cool. I think it's good. I think it's sort of very stripped down, so everything's got space to be there, hasn't it? Yeah. And yeah, I have kind of no yeah, the the more something is stripped the better really I have no qualms with there was a couple of times when Matt when Matt Bourne couldn't make the performance and there was gonna 
you know, cancel. And I thought, well, I can just go on stage. I mean, I can hit the floor and that's, I can work with that. And it doesn't mean that, you know, oh, aren't I good? It just means that that's not, the, the intention isn't to ever deliver anything. The intention is just to, I know what I'm singing about. I know the world that I've created and that's enough. And it's in the performance. Mm. So it can be, that message can be conveyed yeah. in a, a, any way, really, whether you're yeah, yeah. Stamp, stamping on the stage, playing harmonium, somebody's playing electronics, it's still going yeah, to be the same. Or, yeah, it's just, the, it's the same, really. Mm. And when, when's the next album due out? Um, early next year, beginning of next year, I think, <clears throat> I don't know when they're going to announce it. I think they're going to announce it probably at the early next year, but there'll be singles and, you know, kind of videos before then. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, feels like it's taken ages, but um, these things do, don't they? Yeah, especially these, these times. <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have well, to make a note now for my, my new... Um, my new daily routine, which consists of, you know, I'm finding it hard to kind of do anything, you know, these days. I've got into kind of nice, lazy routine. So that's mm-hmm. why I think it's longer. Yeah, yeah. But... <laughs> well, well, thanks, Akki. That was great. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, John.